Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward, joined as always by Jeremy Birmingham and Spencer Holbrook. This is the practice report brought to you by Byers Auto, and it was running back day in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on Tuesday. A lot of ground to cover in one of the most fascinating position battles that the Buckeyes have. Tony Alford and a collection of, I believe, five running backs, all of them except Steel Chambers talking to the media, and we learned a lot about them, how this competition is going to work, how the transition to college is going for Travion Henderson and Evan Pryor. So there was a lot to process from a, a lengthy media session. Great to have one there with Tony Alford and those those uh, tote nation guys. Uh, Berm, what was your number one takeaway from what we heard Tuesday morning? I think the fascinating thing is that this is one of, as you said, one of the more interesting position battles, but it really probably shouldn't be. But it speaks to the difference of how talented young guys like Trey Henderson and Evan Pryor are that they're even going to be putting themselves in this conversation because it's my belief that by the time we get to the Big Ten play next uh, fall, that it's very likely Travion Henderson is the the number one guy in that room. Um, so I think it's just fascinating to see how how these guys get matured from now to then and how much help they're getting from Master Teague, Marcus Crowley, et cetera. Spencer. I thought it was really interesting, the two freshmen talking about the, the different dynamic of one wants to be hit, one doesn't want to be hit. And I think that that just tells a little bit about their styles. I think the more we get to know those guys, the more we're going to we're going to like them. And the more we watch them play, the more we're probably going to fall in love with the way they run the ball. I think those two guys are just just make this room complete. I think it, it uh, adds a different dynamic that we didn't have uh, to cover in, in the past in this room. And I think it's going to be really exciting just to watch this whole thing play out. It was funny to watch Byrne put that together in real time where uh, Trey said, let me, let me get, what did he say? I need one good hit and I'll wake up because he didn't obviously play football last year. Uh, neither did Evan Pryor, but he said, no, I plan on scoring touchdowns. Uh, doesn't want to get hit at all. Definitely a contrast in styles. Won't probably be that easy for Evan Pryor. So I think Trey's probably got the more realistic approach there. Yeah, but I think it's also insightful into the way that they may be used. And I think that, Ohio State has sort of avoided that Curtis Samuel type running back in the last few years. I mean, they did a little bit with Paris Campbell, but as the offense evolves and the quarterback play is, re is less reliant on the deep shots and the quarterback that's, uh, you know, the game changing type quarterback from day one, like Justin Fields or Haskins, I think you might actually see Evan Pryor work himself into that, that jet sweep type role where he's actually used a little bit more on the edges. And I, I think it's telling, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I think that's actually telling as to how the Buckeyes think that they can use Evan Pryor and Trey Henderson on the field at the same time throughout the next couple of years. Well, and for Evan Pryor right now, that would be the fastest way to playing time. Cause as, as we're talking about here with five or six guys vying for that starting job or to be in that top two rotation, if that's how it works out for Tony Alford, um, you need to carve a role that can be clearly defined in the mind of the coaching staff. Uh, and in a game plan every week because of what you have in these veterans. So you have Master Teague with plenty of experience in Big Ten and some big games, touchdowns uh, in the national title game off the bench. He's got the benefit now of not, you know, being fully healthy, not coming off an Achilles. Uh, you know, we'll see how that impacts his development this year. Marcus Crowley, you know, he admitted when he played in the title game coming off of 14 months on the sideline, told Tony Alford on the sideline, I wasn't ready for this. You were right. Uh, they, you know, Ohio State really had no choice but to put him in that game. You know, Mayan Williams proving some people wrong or in maybe in Burns' case, right, about uh, what he could provide after being a little bit under the radar as a recruit. Won a lot of fans over the way he played off the bench. So, you know, we've got these guys at the top where you know what you can do and still Chambers. We'll see exactly how he fits in. Uh, we know that the ball security issues kept him from really taking that jump last year. Uh, been some conversation you know, by the three of us that maybe he would be a better fit at linebacker. And Tony Alford and Ryan Day both have said that's not the case right there. But that's four guys who've been in the year program that, you know, we're talking about all of them with some pretty, you know, encouraging stories or signs that they could be the one to make the jump. And that is a fascinating dy dynamic for Tony Alford to try and manage because six guys in one football, that math is difficult. Yeah, and if you look at this room from last year, I, I just think back to when Master T got hurt in the spring and we were talking about, you know, a walk-on being the, the feature running back in the spring if they would have had it because they just had no depth. And now you look at what this room is now and just the difference one year can make. You bring in two new guys. Everybody else is healthy. Master Teague is back. And, and you just wonder how everything's going to shake out. Tony Alford, 
you know that he can handle a room like this, but you haven't seen him do it in a couple of years. And now you just have to figure out, okay, who fits what, where do they fit and how do they fit? And it's going to be a really interesting spring just to see where all of these different pieces really move together or move apart and who gets the separation, because I think that's going to be the key. I don't think it's going to be one guy. I think there's going to be, you know, maybe two or three guys that separate themselves in the spring and then two or three guys that maybe fall back. Well, and, and Tony offered kind of bristled at this notion that rotating backs doesn't work for Ohio state because they won a bunch of games doing that. Now we can look at, or we can ask JK Dobbins about how he felt about how that worked with Mike Weber and the difference when, he became the, the solo lead back or what happened when Trey Sermon had that opportunity a year ago. You know, I, I think that that's, he was a little bit defensive about that. And it's probably firm in preparation for the fact that Ohio State's not likely, I don't think, you know, you're talking about Trey Henderson. I still don't think that they will go through this year and just one guy is going to get 300 carries. I, I think that they're, the groundwork for that is already being laid here in March that multiple guys are going to have to share the load here. Yeah, I mean, that's but we're, we're trying to figure out a lot of things about the offense in general. We don't know who the quarterback is. We don't know how that quarterback affects the passing game. We don't know who the receivers are really after Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, how that all shakes out. It, it, there's so many moving parts right now. And, I, you know, we think about things or I think about things almost always from the recruiting standpoint and where they come from. And there's a little bit of, you know, we're all obsessed with the new shiny thing in the garage, right? Like Master Teague is like a, a Subaru, like – darn good car, real reliable, you know, it's going to get you where you need to go a lot of times. But when you get that Maserati in the, in the garage, sometimes it becomes impossible to not want to take that out for a spin. And Trey Henderson's a Maserati. Like th there is a, it is not a knock on Master T to, to say straight up, if, if Trey Henderson is able to stay healthy, the talent difference and the, the ceiling difference for him is just vast. And I don't think I just don't think he's the type of player you're going to be able to keep off the field. And we've seen it only at a few spots in the last two decades for Ohio State. And running back is one of them where if there's a young guy, a true freshman, that the Maurice Clarets, the J.K. Dobbins, if they're able to be that different, you can't keep them off the field. And I, I just feel like Trey Henderson has that sort of difference. Yeah, I guess I would think what's um, maybe more intriguing to me coming out of this is listening to those stories about the recovery and the long process for Marcus Crowley, because um, he looked a little bit like a Lambo uh, against Maryland uh, and, and late in that freshman year until the knee got hurt, blew out a tire. If we're going to keep torturing this metaphor, uh, he has big time potential. Marcus Crowley, a healthy, you know, he changes the dynamic of this, this competition. Um, you know, I think the fact that he's had to go through that process and he wanted you know, to be on the field in October, November of last year. And Tony Alford said, no, we saw him going through pregame workouts. And, you know, it was like, okay, well, how close is he? Well, apparently not that close. And Tony Alford was telling him that that's a tough, you know, some of that tough love reality that he had to give him on the sideline, the title game, even though Ohio State had no choice with Mayan Williams out with COVID for that game. But, you know, I, I don't know what vehicle uh, Mayan Williams is. I'll leave that to Spencer. But, you know, they've got a lot of different options in this garage. I'm not sure if I can really come up with a vehicle for Mayan Williams because he's quick enough where you can't really call him like a bus. But at the he's same like time, a Ford, he's, he's like a Ford Bronco, okay? He's like a, <laughs> so he's, Those he's, are pretty he's, high he's, on the road, Burn. Yeah, but he, he's the new model Ford Bronco. He, he, he looks a little bit like the old school one, but there's a, a different engine under there. And I wish Mayan would have been uh, asked today a little bit more about the chip that's on his shoulder that carries him through. Maybe we wouldn't have gotten like a real dynamic, like response, who knows, maybe, you know, you, you internalize that, but that's a kid who no one in the country thought was good enough to play at Ohio state and thought that he was just sort of a throw in at the end of the 2020 recruiting cycle. And he's a really good running back. He's just, he just doesn't look like what you think an Ohio state running back is going to always look like, but that kid can play football. And I know that that carried him last summer and into the early part of the fall where he was just waiting to show someone, if you try to hit me, I am going to deliver the, the, the real pain in that equation. So I, I think that, you know, it's just one of those things where you have to find a way to, to find balance. And it's illogical to think that all six of these guys will be on the roster next spring. It, it's interesting to me when you look at a guy like mine, because when you watch, when you see him on the field in pregame, you think he's probably just a third down back. And then you see him in the game and he hits the hole with a, with a quick burst. And all of a sudden you're like, what is this guy? <laughs> oh, Liberty.
Warden, you're working remotely. Sometimes you have some adversity that you have to battle through. Yeah, but back to the point, like Mayan just kind of surprises you when he hits a hole and he has that burst of quickness. And it, it really just, like I said, it just throws you off. And you're like, well, this is a guy who can make an impact on this team and it can probably have help them have a championship ceiling. I think Mayan Williams is, is going to be the guy to beat in the fall. We've been surprised. We've been thrown off. That's probably a good That's, jumping off point for the running back version. <laughs> hey, we, we never know how the practice report brought to you by Byers Auto is going to go off the rails, but we know eventually it will today. Uh, that's Liberty. Hopefully at some point, we're just going to be back at the Woody doing this at first and we can actually have more control over it. And Hey, if we had a limitless supply of time, we would just reshoot this whole 10 minutes, but we're not going to do that uh, here because we just roll with the punches. Uh, if you're looking for a car, choose Byers Auto. That's Jeremy Birmingham and Spencer Holbrook. I'm Austin Ward. This has been the practice report talking about Ohio state football. We do that all year. Uh, 365 days looking at those Buckeyes at lettermonroe.com. You can find us right there.